Hi, this is Paul from finishyoursong.com and this is the first in a series of videos looking at how to make use of the chord track in Cubase. Uh, what I'm going to be doing in this video is loading some loops in from Cubase's own media bay and using the chord track to transpose them and rearrange them so that they actually fit in with the song rather than their own particular key that they were written in when the loops were recorded. Um, what we've got here is an existing project of mine which is a jazzy style ballad and what I'm going to do is I'm going to load in some parts from the media bay and we can have a look at what they contain and then I'm going to move them into the chord track section of the song which is why we're starting at bar 134 and then we're going to adapt them, edit them and try and generate uh, some parts for the intro and the verse for this particular song. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to import the loops into Cubase from the media bay. Now Cubase will assign the loops at the point where you have the song marker. So at the moment as you can see I've got the left and right markers and the song position marker at bar 134. So I'm going to open the media bay and as you can see I've already previously selected all the jazz loops within the all media section. So I've got MIDI loops selected, jazz selected and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add the acoustic jazz verse A parts into my arrangement. If I just click on them once, I can then audition them. But if I double click on them, it will create a new instrument track in Cubase and put that part at that position in the song. So we're just going to click on them and load them in. And there we go. So we'll close the media bay and we have now a small jazz arrangement of eight bars. We'll have a quick listen. There's a couple of things to notice about these loops as we've imported them. First of all, it's created an instance of Halley and Sonic and it's assigned a preset to it that reflects the particular instrument. And the other thing to note is that it has put the EQ and inserts on each channel not necessarily EQ, but certainly inserts on each channel. It's also activated the chord track and put it on auto. Well, we're going to turn that off just for the moment. It's already off on the drums because obviously you don't want to be transposing your drum notes. That's just going to destroy your drum part. So we'll just quickly open the bass line and have a look, see what we've got. And as you can see, it's an AE alternating bass all the way through. And if we have a look at the piano part, yeah, that's fifths on A, and then fifths on A again. It's pretty much an A chord all the way through and the jazz guitar is again it's an A chord all the way through. So fundamentally what we've got here is eight bars of a chord of A. Not very exciting. However, 
we'll go and look at a more interesting chord progression. This is the intro to later. And as you can see, there's a couple of issues that we're going to have. One is the fact that this intro is 10 bars long, not 8, which is what we've got to start with. And secondly, the chords are a bit more adventurous. Before anybody starts going, what? Uh, I have to say that later got written after I was messing around with some extended guitar chords. I don't normally write chord sequences like this. I very rarely stray far from the California key. But I kind of liked what I came up with on that day, and it stuck. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move these chords down to this point, and then we're going to engage the chord track, and you can see what happens. So put our chord marker there. Right, so we'll zoom that out a bit. Right, so there we have our extended bar of A. Now the first thing we need to think about is how we're going to fill these back two bars. And in our chord sequence, the A D major seventh chord repeats. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut, oops, cut the harmonic content there and move those back a bit and then simply duplicate these to fill in and repeat. I can do the same with this drum part because it's not that imaginative a drum part but normally when I'm editing drum parts what I would do is take the last bar or the last two bars and move that and then repeat something from within the middle. The reason being that with a drum pattern that's about eight bars long, normally the interesting bits are at the beginning and the end, or at the beginning and the end if you prefer, and in the middle it tends to be a bit of the same. So you can pad out your middle like that, uh, which is how I tend to do it. So we've now created that, so we're going to go through and I'm going to turn on the chord track and tell it to follow the chords. And we get this message. Do we want it to follow it directly or do we want to sync it first? Well the answer is we want it to analyze the chords in the chord track and synchronize because then that's a one-time deal. So here we go. And as you can see all the notes magically moved. We'll ignore the drums, we'll go to our guitar We'll turn on the chord track again. Same message, same OK, and same movement. And the same for the piano. So, we've gone from having eight bars of a repeated A to this. So I could go on from here and do the same, adding content from the media bay to build up the verse and the chorus and the rest of the song. I'm not actually going to because that's not exactly the feel that I was aiming for with this song, but it was good enough to illustrate how you can very quickly, using the styles and the content in the media bay, use the chord track to create a full arrangement that suits your song and you're not stuck with eight bars of the chord of A. Hope that helps, hope it's given you some food for thought, and so until next time, you take care of yourselves.